rock is thrown vertically upwards with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second, uh, 5 meters above the ground. The velocity of the rock after t seconds is given by this formula where v is 40 minus 10 t. So let's understand this velocity function. So velocity is given to be 40 minus 10 t. Okay, so you should have a graphical understanding of what's happening. Okay, so uh, let me first draw the graph of your um, the velocity function. So this is your, on the x-axis you're taking t. This is a t for time and the y-axis we're taking velocity. And it is the equation of the, this is the equation of a line. So I hope you understand this is, your y-intercept is 40. This is 40 on the y-axis. And I hope you can see when this becomes 4, when t is 4, this will become 0. So this is, this is your graph of v is equal to 10 minus, sorry, 40t minus, 40t, 40 minus 10t. Okay. Now, let me also give you an understanding of your, if you throw a rock, what will be the shape of the graph? If you have a graphical understanding, you tend to understand things well. So let us say, say this is your distance s. Uh, this is distance. When you're talking about distance, it's a height above the ground. So this is your ground level. On x-axis, we are taking your ground level. So this is your ground level. This is not s, sorry. So this is ground level. On x-axis, we are taking time. Okay, and on y-axis, we are taking height. Or distance, height, or distance, distance above the ground. Okay, it says uh, above the ground. So I hope you understand visually. Uh, this uh, this is a rock going up, and it comes down. So when time is zero, it is five meters above the ground. And when time is zero, yeah. So again, time is zero, yeah. When time is zero, the velocity is 40 meters per second. So this is 40 meters per second. And this is 5 meters. So this goes up. So this is the maximum height. And this, at this point, your velocity is going to be zero. So these are simple things which will help you to understand this question. So find the expression of the height of the rock above the ground level. Okay, so question A. We want to find, you know velocity is given. Velocity is 40 minus, 40 minus 10 t. And your height, in this case, let's write height, is integration of v dt. Because your velocity is change in distance over change in time. Okay, so, so v is dh by dt. Vh is dh by dt. So your h would be the opposite of differentiation, which is integration. Okay. So this is equal to integration of 10, 40, 40 minus 10 t dt. So integrating with respect to t, so height above the ground would be 40 t minus 10 t squared over 2, 10 t squared over 2 plus c. And we already know your height is 5 meters above the ground. So this is simply you can write 40 t minus 5 t squared plus c. Okay, now when time is 0, when time is 0, your s is, your s is 5. So I hope you understand if you put phi, so let me write this properly, this is phi t squared. So if you put t is 0, this is going to be 0, this is going to be 0. So this implies, you can say, your c is going to be phi. So your height, the height of the rock above the ground is given by this formula, which is 40 t minus phi t squared plus phi. Okay, so that's your first answer. Okay, the next question is find the maximum height, 
find the maximum height reached by the rock. So the maximum height is when your maximum height is when your velocity is going to be zero. So when is the velocity zero? From this you can see your velocity is zero. Velocity is zero when t is equal to four seconds. When t is equal to four seconds. Graphically, I hope you can understand. Or you can set for this is question B. So let me use a different color. Maximum height. Maximum height when V is equal to zero. This implies 40 minus 10 T is equal to zero. So 40 is equal to 10 T, making T the subject. You can understand T is equal to four seconds. T is equal to four seconds. Okay. Now you want to find the third, this is done, this is done. So let's calculate the distance traveled in the third second. So the distance traveled in the third second can be found by finding the distance the rock traveled in the first three seconds minus the distance it traveled in the first two seconds. Okay, so there, yeah, let me explain this in a different way. Okay, so your distance traveled in the third second. Distance traveled in the third second. Traveled in third second. It's not in three second. It's in the third second. Okay, in the third second. Let me write the three properly. This is the third second. That means would be the distance traveled in the first three second. S3 tells me the total distance it travels in the first three second minus the distance it travels in the first two second. Okay, so this is, I'm talking about, uh, I should write not uh, S, I should write H here because I have started with H. So H of three minus H of two would give you the distance it traveled so, so H3, this implies, what's your H? This is your function of height. So the distance, H, so H, this is how you find H3. H3 means that the total distance it traveled in the, from zero second to five seconds. So that will be 40, min, 40 times three, minus five times three squared, plus five. So let me get my calculator, menu, run. So 40 times three minus five times three squared plus five. So in the first three second, it had reached the height of 80 meters. Okay, and in the second second, it is, will be 40 minus two, 40 minus 2 minus 5 times 2 squared plus 5. This would be 60. Sorry, this is 80. And this is, so let me get my calculator. 40 times 2 minus 5 times 2 squared plus 5, which is 65 meters. So you can also check this on the calculator like this. If you go to a table, so table and let me delete it. So you can go, the equation was 40x minus 5x squared plus 5. Let me go at a step of uh, 1. So when your time started, the rock was 5 meters above the ground. So after th th three seconds, it had traveled 85 meters, or it was 85 meters above the ground. And in the second second, it was 65 meters above the ground. So the t distance it traveled between these two time, or that in the third second, would be this 85 minus 65. So the answer would be 85 minus 65, 85 meters minus 65 meters, which is 15 meters. So the distance the rock traveled in the third second was 15 meters. Or even if you find the area of this, 
the area would also give you the same answer. Okay, so not this area. So I'm not going into, suppose if you split this, uh, so this is your second second and this is your third second. Okay, so this is say two, this is two and this is three. This is your time two. At time two, what will be your height? Okay, let's think in a different way. Your, your height, uh, what will be, your function is 40 minus, 40 minus 20. So 40 minus 20, so this is 20 meters per second. And this will be 40 minus 30, which is 10 meters per second. So if you find this area, of course, because the area under this curve will give you the distance because this is your velocity, this is your velocity and this is your time. And you, I hope you understand. This is your time and this is your velocity. So your distance, you learn in physics, distance is velocity times times. So you can do that, you can split this into a triangle and uh, a rectangle and this area would also be 65. A different way of doing this is using definite integration. If you, without even integration, you can do this, but let me show you how you can do this, get the same answer in a different way. So your distance, your h, can also be found like this. It's the integration between 2 to 3 of 40 minus 10 t of 40 minus 10 t, 10 t dt. So as it's definite integration, uh, the limit, the constant of integration can be cancelled. So plus 10 t, sorry, this is minus, so we already know the integration of this is minus 5 t squared, minus 5 t squared, between 2 to 3. And that's what we have done here. I hope you understand. If you put 3 here, you'll get 80, 80 and if you put 2 here, you'll get 65. So this way also you'll get the same answer, which is 15 meters. Okay, finally, when will the rock return to the ground? Okay, when would the rock return to the ground? That means, you do a little of algebra here. So question D is, Return to the ground means what's the height of the rock? Return to ground means what's the height? It implies your height is going to be zero. Okay, so we already know height is 40t minus 5t squared plus 5. So I'm going to put zero in place of height and I'm going to factor out the 5. So if we factor out the 5, you will have 8t minus t squared plus 1. So you can divide both sides by 5. So finally, you have minus t squared plus 8t plus 1 is equal to 0. I can multiply minus 1 to the whole thing. So this will become t squared minus 8t minus 1 is equal to 0. So you can use a quadratic formula to solve this, but I'm going to use my graphic calculator and go to equation, uh, where is equation? Yeah, equation polynomial second degree. Okay, so the equation is, I need to scroll this slowly. Okay, so I'll put one, negative eight and negative one and see what happens and go to solve, go to solve, the two answers are 8.1 and ne negative 0 0.1. Okay, so 8.1, so your t is 8.1 seconds or t is equal to negative 0 0.1. Okay, but our t should be greater than 0, but t in our case should be greater than 0. So you can say your t is going to be 8.1 seconds. So after 8.1 seconds, it fell on the ground. So let me show this graphically. Go to graph, okay, 
and type in this equation of 40x minus 5x squared plus 5. I know the max I need to set the scale. I'll go from 0 to 10 seconds. And here I'll change from 0 to 100. Scale of 10. And then draw the graph. Okay, so GSOL root. Okay, so when this is 8.13. Okay, so after 8.1 second, it is on the ground when height is equal to 0.